What's up, party people? Welcome to Babushka Land. Today, I'm going to show you how to make this massive, massive, efficient creeper and mob killing machine. This machine will allow you to stay AFK underneath it and will continuously spawn creepers and other mobs. It can be turned on and off with the flick of this lever here. These tridents will then kill all of the mobs that end up in your farm. The items in EXP will filter down through the water here. The items will fall into these hoppers as you can see, as well as the EXP. If you stand on this spot here, you will gain EXP. And if you open the treasure chest, you will see the items that drop. Now I had left myself AFK for a few hours. I had all the items that you see here. I did, however, end up falling off of this platform and killing myself. So I lost my very high level 72. Uh, however, over the last two hours where I've been cooking dinner, I've actually recuperated about 33 levels, so I would consider that pretty good. This farm, originally made by Golden Helmet 403, I'll link to him in the description below, is a massive undertaking. You are going to need all of the materials that I have listed on the screen here. If I were you, I would make sure I bring extra. I brought a lot of extra items. I brought way more stacks than I actually needed because this project is being built in the sky 150 blocks above the ground. So if you don't bring extra items that you feel you can let go of, you're gonna go up and down over and over again and it's going to waste hours of your time when you're building this project. I will copy and paste the required items in the description below. We're going to create a gigantic contraption that will hopefully mostly kill creepers. There was another video that somebody else did saying that this was the best creeper farm on bedrock so we're going to try and make it and see how that goes. This farm is going to require a lot of materials. I have six shulker boxes here completely filled with everything I'll need and a little bit extra and I've also brought a couple shulker boxes with some extra materials as well just in case. I'm going to start off by towering 160 blocks in the air. You only really need to tower 150 blocks above the highest block that's in your area but just in case I'm going to go a little extra higher. Once you're at the top you're going to want to build yourself a platform. This platform is actually not part of the build. I just want a base of operations where I can put all my shulker boxes so I can start building from there. Also, I assume that you're going to be building this on survival mode as I am. So if you're doing this on survival mode, it's going to be key to have a platform so that you can put a bed up here. I'd also torch the area up as well. Once you've made your platform, go back to your scaffolding. Build two blocks out, put a trap door on top, and on top of that, you can place a temporary treasure chest and throw a hopper on top. Later on, this is going to be your AFK spot. From here, build up 21 layers of scaffolding. Once you get to the top, place a block like this, then a fence block, then on the side, you can attach some glass and another block like so. Then put a fence on top of that. Hop on top of the glass and build out three blocks. And then three in each direction. At the end of each one, pop a magma block down. So one, two, three, then a magma block and do the same on the other side. One, two, three, magma block. One, two, three, magma block. All right, so you should start to get an H looking formation like this. Okay, so this is gonna be your kill floor and now we're going to outline it. Once you've gotten your outline, put some water on top of each block of magma. Next, outline the top with some glass. 
just in case you haven't realized it yet, I have copy and pasted the materials list into the description below. I hope that will be helpful for you. Next, take out this block here and this one here. Place three blocks here and one block here. Put a temporary block here, put a block there, get rid of this one. Grab your repeater, place it here, set it to two ticks. Grab some redstone dust, put some here, put some here. Put a torch there, put a torch here. Next, hop on top of the glass and put a piston there. And put a piston facing up this way here. Once the pistons are moving like I do when I hang out with your mother, you can put a lever right here to shut them off. Okay, so you're going to be able to turn them on and off very easily. Here's a far out view. Once that's finished, you can build up a little bit here. So we're going to make some plus signs on each side. And we're going to throw some glass on the inside like this. That's where the sand is going to rest. Afterwards, you can make it so that the water is contained in a little tube. Like so. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So it should all look like this now. Grab a soul torch, put it in the middle, and put two slabs over here. Now we're going to build up the trident area. So you can fill up some more glass here, and then just build up two on each side of the piston. Once that's done, you can throw the tridents just above the pistons. Test to see if it's working by flipping the lever. So that's probably not too mob friendly, which is exactly what we want. Next, you can build out eight blocks. And then up five. From here, make sure you have a lot of stone bricks. Place one in front of you and then build out nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to build a 19 by 19 platform. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen should be correct. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And then I should be able to meet this guy right here. 
but it looks like I miscounted somehow. Anyway, that's fine. That's exactly where I want it. And we can go ahead and fill this in about three layers inside. Once you've built three layers inward, find the drop shoots and go to the innermost glass block. Once you're done doing that, fill the rest of the area in with blocks. You're going to leave a hole underneath the magma. Once you've filled everything in, you should have an even square with four holes and four pieces of sand. When your square is complete, go down to your base of operations platform and grab all of your shulker boxes and your bed. You can leave this here for now and just move on up top. First, place your bed and set your respawn point just in case you do something stupid. Then place your shulker boxes. Now that your base is set up top, grab some temporary blocks and cover up these holes. You don't want to fall in there and die, so you know, probably a good idea. Oh, wrong hole. <laughs> wrong hole, get it? <laughs> so funny. Throw some cactus on the sand and light up the area so monsters don't spawn while you are working. Next, grab your iron bars, go to the corner, place one, and build a fence all along the perimeter until you get to the next corner and put an iron bar down. Continue along like so, and we can just repeat that process until we have covered the entire platform. Oh, we're going to skip over the area with the scaffolding. When you get to the area with the scaffolding, just place a fence gate. Once your perimeter is set up, go to the corner, place a fence on top of every other fence post. Once you realize you've counted something wrong, be thankful you've brought extra blocks. Alright, once you're done with that, head back to your scaffolding, pop a fence gate on top of your fence gate, open that baby up, and tower up. Go ahead and start to build the next layer on top of your first layer. Once you're done building the second layer, double check if the holes are directly above your cactuses, then go back down. Collect all your shulker boxes and move your base of operations up one floor. Make sure you set that bed down for that respawn point and you definitely click on that bed. Then you're gonna head back down with lots of trap doors and scaffolding. All right, head back down and with your trap doors, go between each fence on the second level, I guess, and place a trap door. Once you make a perimeter with trap doors, then you're gonna skip one row on each side and then make another square of trapdoors every other block. Once you get to the block directly above your cactus, just shift click on a nearby trapdoor, get one directly above it so it covers the hole and then delete that one there.
Once you've placed everything, double check and make sure you didn't miss any spots. Come up to your second layer, build out a little bit, and build out like so. Because I forgot to tell you to make an infinite water source. So, sorry if you had to go down to get water, but now at least you won't have to go down over and over again. Next, we're going to grab our scaffolding and outline the perimeter where the fence is. It should only be one high. And the scaffolding should be only where there is no trap door. So, on the next row, you're going to put one in every place where there's no trap door. So that should be every other block. And then, you, since there's no trap doors in the next row, you're just going to make a full row of trap doors. So go make 17 buckets, or don't make 17 buckets if you want to go back and forth, but you're going to need 17 buckets of water to fill each floor. Also, it might be good if you have a Death Strider 3 on your shoes. Uh, I would assume you do at this point, since it's pretty late game. Head to the corner, face the ceiling, and play some water. Actually, where you have those temporary blocks, you can place some fence gates, like so, and open them up. You're going to need to do that. Which means, I guess you're going to have to make a bunch of fence gates. Right here as well. Boom. And now go to the corners and fill them all in with water. Once you've done that, make your way to the middle. And you will see that there is four places where you need to place water as well. Go to the end of the platform and place it in the furthest block out to the middle. So these ones all go above the scaffolding. Once you've placed those, I think it's a good time to make a copy of your game. Because now is a really easy time to die now that the kill floors are open and you could get pushed in by the water you're placing down. Okay, come right back to the center and go towards one of your water sources. So this, this is exactly where the water source is. We're going to go one, two, and take out the scaffolding and place a water source there. Okay, you can go back to the middle. And go to the corner. So your water source block is directly here. Then you're going to go one, two. Take out the scaffolding and place another water source block. 
So I just fell in here and realized I could not fall in by closing these fences. So I'm going to do that for the top fences uh, so that I don't fall into the magma and die. Anyway, go to the center and come out to here. So there's a water source here. There's not one there, and there's not one here, and this is where it needs to go. One. Check over here. Okay, this one is placed in this corner. I'm going to go to the source here. Once you've dealt with those very confusing corners, and sides, break the middle scaffolding, place a water source at the bottom and at the top. Basically if you stand at any spot you should be eventually dragged into the magma. So you might want to double check that for yourself. For example here I might not have done it properly. Although that'll, no, that would definitely kill me if I was a mob. Alright, so you should be all set. Go through and check if you're, if you left any torches down on the ground. Once you're done checking for torches, open up your fence gates. And get out of there. So just like that, your first layer is complete. So on the second layer here, I have placed wooden blocks exactly where you need to place water blocks. So I hope that helps you out, including the two blocks I'm standing on. You need a water source on the ground and above the ground in the middle. And then on the outermost layer, they're all above the ground. And in the inner outer layer, they're on the ground. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is clear out a block on the outside of where your cactus is so that you'll have a clear shoot all the way down to the magma kill chamber area. So from there, go ahead, grab your sand and place a cactus on top of it. So yeah, your second layer is going to look like this for a little bit, and we'll fill everything. I'm going to try and fill everything in with scaffolding first, and then maybe do the third layer uh, platform after that. So if you're looking for a grid layout uh, for how to do the scaffolding, here's a good shot. You might want to pause the video here and follow this pattern just like so. So once you've got your scaffolding laid out, head to the chutes and put some fences on them. So now that I'm this far, I'm going to build the platform on top So now that the platform's complete, I'm going to cover up the chute areas. Okay, grab a bunch of trap doors. There's some trap doors. I'll take one, two, three, three. There we go. You're just going to put trap doors in all the areas where there is no scaffolding. I guess above where there is no scaffolding. I'm just working my way from the outside inward. Once you get to the cactus, place a trap door temporarily there, place one directly above it, and break the temporary one. Make sure you also place trap doors between the fences on the outside perimeter. Once you've done that, you can go and get your water. Make sure you've placed all your trap doors correctly, do a double take. And once you've done that, you can start replacing 
the temporary blocks that you've placed with water sources. Don't forget the water source at the entrance. While you're still down here, go to where your fence gates are and take out your temporary blocks. Might be a bit of a challenge. Boom, got one. This is why you really need Death Strider. Two. Three. I've got my four shoots placed and I've got my fences. Or sorry, I think it's better if these are closed rather than open. I feel like they might block entities. So yeah, so eventually you're going to have seven floors where monsters can spawn. Before we work on the final touches, I want to do a little bit of troubleshooting. On the first layer here, I have water everywhere I need it. So water is flowing through all of these, uh, water is flowing on top of all of the scaffolding. Uh, or it's guiding monsters to places where they will eventually be killed. Now, on the second layer, I have the exact same situation, except for a couple pieces here and there, but I think this is still pretty good. I guess it looks like I've forgotten to uh, take out this here and put some water in the middle there, so I will go ahead and do that. So in the second layer, I was definitely missing water on the bottom here, and water on the top here. So that should improve the way things flow. I guess these monsters that get stuck here will eventually get killed by this uh, cactus, so that's perfect. Once you've double checked and made sure everything is going right on the inside of your farm, you can then come up to the roof and finish it off. So plug up these holes. We're not going to build any more layers. Then build out one, two, three, four, five, six. So you're going to build out six on each side. Two, three, four, five, six. Just fill this area in and count back. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to start here, build out one, two, three, four, five, six. Then once you've built out, you can fill the corners in like this. Holy crap, I've actually run out of stone. I have to go, go down and get more stone. After you've moved your roof out six tiles and filled in the corners, you can then cover it with slabs. After you put the slabs on, no monsters will be able to spawn on your gunpowder machine. And that's it. Once it's completely covered in, covered in slabs, you can head down, knock this out, fill in the last roof tile. I guess I'm just going to fill this in with more slabs. And yeah, you can shut the gates as you go down. Take apart your temporary platforms. Get rid of your infinite water source if you haven't already. Yeah, as you can see, the EXP is just falling down, and so is the gunpowder. Going all straight to me. Alright, so I've built a little uh, storage system. I'll probably modify this into a much better one in the future. But, if you stand here, you should be able to collect some EXP, and you should see a lot of items starting to flow into this chest. I actually ended up collecting over 64 uh, gunpowder just in the last few minutes while I was here. So I'm going to leave this AFK for a little bit and come back, and we will see what happens.
So I've been AFK for about 25 minutes, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 stacks of gunpowder, plus 17, and a bit of string, some bones, arrows, bows. Okay, so I guess you get some zombie items, some skeleton items, but mostly creeper and spider items for sure. And it looks like the gunpowder drops are pretty good. Since I've been playing, I've only really collected like 80 something gunpowder in total, maybe 100 something gunpowder in total. And this farm after 20 minutes has already supplied me with much more gunpowder than I've gotten from killing monsters. I'm also now level 38 and I think I started when I was around level 5 or 6 or something. That's actually pretty nice. Uh, shout out to Golden Helmet 403. So a quick update for 1.20. The farm is still working. It's working very well. As you can see, I'm level 102, so I've been collecting a lot of EXP. I've been collecting a lot of gunpowder. Yeah, I've been converting the string into wool, so I so what you see here is not actually representative of the ratio of drops between gunpowder and string. It's closer to about 60% gunpowder and 40% string. Another thing here I noticed is that the fence now connects to glass blocks. So if we turn this on and we kill some of these creepers, I mean it's flowing right now but the items can definitely potentially be stuck and also misdirected. So in order to rectify that problem, we're going to take these glass blocks out and replace them with leaves. The leaves do not connect to the fence, so you don't have to delete the fence just in case you decide to stand here and fall down for some reason. The good news is this farm works very well in the new 1.20 update. Thank you for watching my video, I hope you found this helpful. This mob farm has certainly been a great addition to Babushka Land because now I have more gunpowder than I know what to do with. If you found this helpful, please let me know in the comment section below and like and subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye bye.